Hi, this is Alex from phpacademy.org with a video tutorial for the new Boston. In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at the hide effect in jQuery. Now, the hide effect allows you to call this function uh, appended to a specific element on your page in order for you to hide this particular element. Essentially, what this does is sets the visibility in CSS um, so it cannot be seen, so it's not visible. So what I've done is I've set up a basic page and we're going to create a couple of elements and then use this effects.js file to trigger um, the click of a button and then hide these specific elements. So the first thing we're going to look at is a plain div. So if we create a div and give it an ID of a underscore div and we write some text inside here. When we go to our browser and refresh our page, you can see that we've got just some text inside here. Now let's go ahead and create a button at the top of our page, and we're going to be able to click on this button and hide this particular div. So let's go ahead and create the button. So we need an input type button, and we're going to give this a value of hide. And then we need to give this an ID as well because we need to use an event handler to actually, well, for when the user clicks the button, um, we need to handle this event. So I'm going to call this a button. So inside effects.js, which is included on my page as well as jQuery, we can go ahead and start writing the code. So the first thing that we want to do is actually handle the event when this button is clicked. So we use hash because we're referencing an ID and then we write a button. Then we say dot click, which is the click event handler. So when we click on the button, this is what will happen. We produce a function from this and inside of this block here, um, we've written the function out with the parentheses at the start of the block and the end of the block. Inside this function here, we write our code. So now what we want to do is we want to actually hide this div. So the first stage of this is again to actually reference this element. So I'm just going to write hash referencing this by ID and the ID is a underscore div. Then we use dot to actually carry out the hide function. So if we were to just write dot hide and then empty parentheses, um, you'll notice that when we actually press this button, the event handler is called and we actually hide this element. So let's go ahead and test that. You can see that the element has disappeared from the page. So now that we've hidden this div, there are a few parameters that we can give to this hide function in order to change some settings. The first one is the speed in which it progresses. And we can even either give this in a textual representation or a numerical representation. For example, we might want to hide this fast. Now this will automatically um, this will automatically show uh, some kind of animation with this uh, the hiding of this. So when we click hide, you can now see it sort of scrolled up into the corner. Now if we were to choose slow, for example, this will slow down the animation and you can see that it slides up slightly slower. Now what we can actually do is give a numerical representation in milliseconds. So if for example I was to choose 1000, this would represent one second. So now when I click hide, it takes one second to disappear. We could obviously then increase this to say 5000, which would represent five seconds. When we click hide, you see it very, very slowly disappears. Now there's an optional parameter and this is the easing um, of the animation. So let's just choose slow for now. Easing by default is at swing, um, but you can choose linear. And what this does is it just changes the way that the animation happens and the easing of the animation. So if we were to choose linear, we get a slightly different effect uh, and it, it hides it slightly differently. Um, let's just test that in our browser. And you'll notice that it's, it's quite hard to notice with short pieces of text, um, but if you were to compare them with, say, larger text, it just eases the way the animation um, starts and ends. 
Now, furthermore, there is a third parameter we can give this, and this is the callback function. So if you wanted to feed back something to the user once the animation had been complete, or once this uh, div in particular had been hidden, you can then append a function onto here. So if we create a function, and then again, an, a start and an end block, and we just bring this down to here, what we can do is then we can do something that will or carry out an action that will tell the user that we've successfully hidden this element uh, once the function has been called. So I could say, for example, element hidden. So what will happen now is once we've clicked this button, the element will be hidden slowly and in linear fashion. It will then use a callback function and this will alert the user that the element has been hidden. So let's go ahead and test that out. When we click hide, you can see that after the animation completed, we have this alert box element hidden. Now, the reason we have callback functions is essentially so we do something after a particular element. The majority of functions in jQuery support uh, callback functions. So let's say, for example, you gave the user the option to hide a particular element, but you wanted to save this later on. So when they logged back onto your website, it would actually still remain hidden. You could use a callback function to perhaps add a, a value into a database a table, or in fact, you could store this in a session. So there's a, there's a um, wide variety, obviously, of use for a callback function. It just depends on if you need it and what you're going to do with it.